Hi, this is Amy, and I'm going to show you how to make the dice for the game Pumpkin Pass, or you can make this dice for anything that you're trying to do. But we were using it to make a composition activity in Seesaw or in Google Slides. So I created the dice two different ways. Here's the first way, using Google Slides. I credit Chris Shiner for showing me how to do this when he was creating dice for his elementary school activities. I like following him on YouTube, so definitely follow him on YouTube. You get some great Seesaw tips, and then you just kind of convert them to using it in a music classroom. So this is how he did it. So I'm just kind of going over what he did, and then I'm gonna show you how I made it three-dimensional. So here in Google Slides, I click File, and I go to Page Setup. In here, you're going to customize it so it's a square. So 10 by 10, and hit Apply. Here I went over to the shape tool and just like him, I love the rounded shape, so I use the rounded shape. Already having created um, different rhythm patterns, I'm going to bring in a rhythm pattern. So I just screenshot it. This is not the nicest looking one. I did make mine look a little bit nicer, um, but I just put it right here. So what you can do is you duplicate it which is con Command D or Control D, I believe, or right click duplicate. And then here I'm going to take out and put in a different rhythm pattern. So you have a rhythm pattern that go with the song. So if you're doing this on your own, you can create rhythm patterns that go with the song. Now I was just using a drawing tool to make these pumpkins so that I knew I was using my own pumpkin uh, screenshot. So I made that using the drawing tools in slides, and that's how I did it. And then, as we've discussed before, you're going to copy and paste this till you have about under 100 slides. So copy and pasting meant I selected all, Command C, and then Command V, or Control C, Control V. So now I have about 100 slides. Next thing I'm going to do is add on and do this free create Creator Studio. Now that Creator Studio is open, we're going to put the output width to 500 and then about 0.1 here so it looks like it, it um, shuffles pretty quickly. And then video format. You're going to hit go. And this might take a while. If you have a problem with Creator Studio right now, it's not, you, it's not only you, this time I didn't have any issues, but if you have other Google accounts logged in at the same time, log out of those Google accounts and that usually fixes the problem. So I download that file if you get this like I happened last week. Instead just hit the preview and then go ahead and download this way. Once you download you get something that looks like this. This was my original one and it moves around then they click stop. And that works. So now you have the pumpkin dice. What I usually do is put it into my YouTube channel as unlisted and then just put that right into the game. Just put in insert video that YouTube link and it works. Now this one is 3D. How did I do the 3D? So 3D I went over to PowerPoint. So I go to PowerPoint to create a 3D object instead. So I'm going to insert a shape, but this time a 3D square. So I put the square in here and I'm going to turn it orange, maybe make the line black and a little bit more in the width so you can see the outline. Then I take those pictures again. So just putting a picture in on the front is easy right because all you have to do is move it resize it it's gonna look pretty good but how are you gonna make it look flat there well take a shape again I'm gonna take another rhythm pattern put it up here put it there and this time I'm going to in the 3d rotation click and I'm looking for that shape it's going to now make it so it rotates the way I would like it to I try to just flatten it and then make it bigger. You're not going to be reading up there, so all you want to do is just give the impression of 3D dice. So the last one, I bring it in, it's the same one, but you know what I mean. I'm going to bring it over here, and then again, I look for this 
That's a good one. And it's going to flatten it for me. And then I want it to fit. It's going to resize it for me. Now again, they don't have to read it. They're reading the front of the dice. Now to make the dice spin, what I do is the transitions this time. So I go into the transitions on how you're going to animate this, and I go over to cube. And each transition I give a different one. So the first cube effect might be from the right. And then the second cube effect, I might go back in there and find, let's see, this time I might go from the bottom. So I did this for all of them. And again, you know, it's like 99 slides are doing this for so that you make a video that's a good, you know, few seconds length. So to export it, I export it as a video. Now here, I'm going to show this to you because my PowerPoint can't do that. And your PowerPoint might not be able to either, but most of the times, you would find right here, I'm going to show you, that you should be able to save it as an MP4 or movie. And then you just have to play with the timing. So since I had Keynote, that's what I did. I just took the PowerPoint, and Keynote can open PowerPoint files. So I did it here again with the transitions, changing it all over, as you notice, right here. And then when I went to export it, I exported it as a movie, and then I just turned those transitions into zero. And once I did that, I got a movie that automatically did this for me. I did have some fun playing with the timing right here so that the duration was going between, as you can see here. So it wasn't going too fast. Yes, they can pause it to figure out which one they want. But in the same respect, if they had sensory issues, I didn't want it to go too fast. So I did that and had that automatic just to test it, and that's how it looks in the movie. So that's how I made a 3D one in case you wanted to make a 3D dice for any of your games. Hope that helps. Follow me on YouTube and my channel. And again, this is all part of the book, Using Technology with Elementary Music Approaches, which uh, integrates technology into Dr. Fire Robin's First Steps, Kodai, and or Schulwerk, as well as project-based learning. The supplemental website has a lot of these files that I create, and they're up there. And the book describes more on how to use them in a lesson, the standards you hit, the higher order thinking questions, and different formats and everything that you can use with these lessons. So I hope that helps.